Okay, hi there. Uh, in lessons uh, last week, we were thinking about the theory of demand in markets. And a concept came up called effective demand, which I think is quite important. So uh, let's spend a couple of minutes just thinking about this idea. Important to get this on board if you want to understand the working of the price mechanism. Let's think about effective demand. Well, what do we mean by the term? Well, effective demand is when somebody's desire uh, to buy a good or a service is actually backed up by an ability to pay for it. Only when demand is effective does it really become meaningful in the market. So you've got to have a willingness and ability to purchase goods at different prices, an ability to pay for something. And we make a distinction between that, effective demand, and something called latent demand, potential demand, not yet expressed in the marketplace. I would love to buy a second home for my retirement or perhaps a yacht or have a have a super expensive holiday. Well, it's not really demand because I'm not yet in a position to be able to pay for it. Some examples of effective demand at work. Oftentimes when prices come down for products, uh, this brings more consumers into the market because their demand has now become effective. So you'll have seen recently perhaps that Apple has launched a cheaper iPhone uh, with a smaller screen and it's basically trying to cut the entry point for their smartphones, for their iPhones, for those came on the market uh, 2007 because it wants to bring in more customers whose incomes uh, in the past have stopped them buying it. It's trying to grow its user base for the iPhone. Other companies will follow suit as well. Another good example is the electric car market, the effective demand for new electric or hybrid vehicles. Uh, the government has actually offered a subsidy for consumers of electric cars. I think it was originally £3,500. That makes a difference, but that subsidy has now come down to £3,000. So unless there's a similar fall in price, the effective demand for these kind of electric vehicles probably won't increase very much. Oftentimes, a price war between suppliers brings down average prices and therefore increases effective demand because it increases your real incomes. Here's a good example from the Indian telecoms market in the autumn of 2020. And the entry of new firms, new suppliers, extra competition, increases market supply, lowers prices and increases effective demand. So here's a good example from Vietnam, the startup airline, Bamboo Airlines. It's trying to launch, I think, Vietnam's first direct flight to the United States. They're leasing an Airbus 380, but they're trying to break into the really fast-growing aviation markets in emerging Asia. There are many factors that can increase the level of effective demand. Uh, just reverses if you want to see a decrease. So when wages are rising faster than prices, people's incomes are going up in real terms, increasing their effective demand. When the state is increasing welfare payments faster than inflation, such as universal credit or the state pension, again, that increases effective demand. When the cost of loans comes down, brings more people into the market. A good example would be the cost of mortgages, servicing the cost of housing loans. New technology innovation brings prices down, increases real effective demand. The government can either offer a subsidy to suppliers, which lowers their costs and they hope will feed into lower prices, or they can offer a subsidy direct to consumers to increase their effective demand. And as we mentioned, the intense competition can bring prices down and bring more customers into the market. So to summarise, effective demand, a really key concept to use in your introductory theory. It occurs when a consumer's desire to buy a good or a service can actually be backed up by his or her ability to afford it. It's a really key concept in microeconomics. Okay, thank you.